typical street in England we could we become synonymous with the sacrifice and sorrow of wartime. There was a family that lived on this street whose eight sons went off to fight in World War I. Five of them were killed. The Beachy family were a very big family. 14 children. Amy Beachy and Philip Beachy were living in Freesthorpe. Philip was a vicar. Philip died in 1910 and in 1912 the family moved here. Now it was this street that Amy would dread the telegram boy coming up and down to give more bad news. The sacrifice this family made shouldn't be forgotten. And as I walk to where they used to walk as a family, I will tell you about the sons that were killed. Barnard was the oldest. He was second battalion of the Lincolnshire Regiment and a gifted mathematician. He was a graduate of Cambridgeshire College and was a maths teacher who was teaching at Dorchester High School and was deputy head when war came along. He wrote in great detail about life in the trenches, so much so that historians would use it because of the great detail he went into. Unfortunately, Barnard was killed in trench warfare on the 25th of September, 1915. He was 38 years old. No sign of Barnard was ever found. Frank was a second lieutenant in the 13th Battalion, East Yorkshire. He was a very active kid, well, man. He played football for Lindham and was wicketkeeper for Lincolnshire Cricket. Now Frank was a signal signaller and on the 13th of November, a very foggy night, the officers lost, sig lost signal with their troops and needed the communication line to be fixed. Frank crawled out into the battlefield to fix the line. His legs were blown off and he lay there dying of his wounds. He was there from dusk till dawn. At dawn, a doctor crawled out onto the battlefield to administer morphine. Amy would get a telegram to say that he was badly wounded, but unfortunately he would die of his injuries the next day. He was 30 years old and died on the 14th of November. Harold wouldn't have lived in this area. He emigrated to Australia in 1910 with brother Christopher. Harold was a farmer in Western Australia. When his harvest didn't crop, if that's the word, he felt it was his duty to sign up for the war that had taken the life of one brother at the time. Harold was a Lance Corporal at the 48th Battalion of the Australian Imperial Army. 
he was sent to Jalopoli, which in Anzac history is one of the most important battles and it would help give Australian and New Zealand identity to be independent countries. Howard caught dysentery and was invalided out of the war at Jalopoli. When he recovered from that, he was sent to fight in trench warfare. He was hit by shrapnel and he would write home to Amy about how fortunate he was at how uninjured he was. He would say he had full movement of his arms and he was lucky that it didn't penetrate his ribs. Harold was killed at Bull Court on the 10th of April 1917. He was just 26 years old. And this is the park where the family would come and have a walk around. And you can imagine Amy, the mother, coming here whenever bad news was given about the death of her children. Charles was predominantly stationed in trench warfare throughout 1916. He caught kidney disease and for Christmas of 1916 he was in hospital. After Recovering from that, he was one of 300,000 British soldiers sent to East Africa of what is now Tanzania. I'll just turn you around because it's a beautiful sunrise. Now, Charles thought to himself that he was very lucky to be in East Africa as the climate was so much better and he was enjoying the wildlife and he would write home to Amy about the findings that he found and how he wanted to take home butterflies to show Amy. He would also write to Amy and I quote I can't think any family has given more to this country than we have. And that was after learning about the deaths of his brother. Morning. Charles was killed by machine gun fire, was shot in the chest on the 20th of October. 1917. He was 39 years old and served as private in the 25th Battalion of the Royal Fusiliers. Now, doing my research, it was kind of Leonard that I felt most attached to. He was working on the trains at London Houston when war broke out. 
he signed up and the reason I liked him is because of the letters I read some of the letters that he wrote back to Amy he spoke of Charles dying and said it's hard for me to realize that he is gone with everyone that passes it gets harder I miss you Leonard was killed was gassed at the Battle of Campery. He had tetanus and when he was on his deathbed he would write to Amy my darling mother don't feel like doing much yet all my love Len and it was said due to the scrawling childlike handwriting it broke Amy's heart as he knew he was dying and that was correct and three weeks later on the 29th of December Leonard died 836 he was rifleman for the London Iris Rifles uh, in this park there was a memorial for the Beachy Boys and I will show you that now I mean seriously with the rubbish. It's remembrance weekend as well. Um, Lincoln was the birthplace of the tank and this bench is for the Beachy Boys and for the invention of the tank. The five soldiers are, are representative of the Beachy Boys. and a plaque was placed in their honour just next to it in memory of it reads in memory of Amy Beachy and her family who enjoyed many walks in the Arboretum from the home in nearby Avondale Street which is where we've just been Eight of Amy's sons fought in the Great War, only three survived, one of whom was badly injured in the ultimate sacrifice. Now, I'll put the rubbish in the bin, whoever you are. Now, what of the other three sons? Well, Christopher emigrated to Australia with Harold and served in the Battle of Jalapoli as well. He was wounded in that battle. He was shot in the shoulder and as he was shot, he fell down a cliff. He was so badly, he was badly injured and so badly he never walked again. He was sent back to Australia and he would never see Amy again. I'll put the rubbish in the bin, take note, everybody do it. Now all eight sons served in combat, uh, Eric trained as a dentist and as war broke out he was sent to do de de dentistry, excuse me, and he was stationed in Malta and he was far away from conflict and he wasn't injured one last time the last one Samuel only served for three only only served for three weeks in the first world war um, I'm sure it felt like a lifetime but he survived unscathed and came home to Lincoln to be with Amy Amy died in 1936 aged 81 when she was presented to Queen Mary 
and thanked for her sacrifice, she very famously said, it was no sacrifice, ma'am. I didn't give them willingly. So, as I walk out of this park, I thought I'd read a poem and and show you Amy's grave that I visited. And I do quite like poetry, and this one is from the First World War. When I come to the end of the road, and the sun sets down on me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Do not cry for a soul set free. Miss me a little, but not too long. And not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this journey that we all must take and each must go alone. It's all part of the master plan. A step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick of heart, go to the friends we know and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. So, the legacy is one of great sacrifice. Only one other family would lose so much in the war. And who knows, I might do that for next Remembrance Sunday. But a family of 14, all eight boys going to war, five of them being killed, one of them never being seen by their mother again is a tragedy we can all what's the word we can all cry to isn't it I mean it's horrendous um, so everyone that serves in the war you're braver than me it's insanity and in lockdown I think we can all agree things could be worse, a hell of a lot worse. Now, a few years ago, limestone crosses, which were made from the stone that's used at the Lincoln Cathedral, which unfortunately is out of eyesight, but there's a few of my other videos that I've been to the cathedral if you want to see it. Um, one was put on the battlefields that each of the boys died in. Barnard's was in France, Frank's was in France, Howard's was sent back to Perth where he emigrated to, um, Charles was in Tanzania, and Leonard's was in another battlefield in France. One was sent to Threesfort Church, which was their church and where they originally lived before they moved to Avondale Street. Um, I believe the crosses are now taken from the graves and they're on display at the memorials for each of the battlefields that they died in. Um, if you want me to visit those, it would be fitting if I have 111,111 likes. I will do that. I ain't joking. Enjoy, or not enjoy, have a pleasant Remembrance Weekend, and this video is for everybody that's been lost in the war. Have a good day.